Hey everyone, welcome to the GrowthWorks Thoughts on Thursday. Um, we are really excited this week to turn our attention to commercials and the commercial recovery of the hotel industry. I think whatever function you work in, the uh, engine of growth to bring guests back to the hotel is probably number one on everyone's, on everyone's plate right now. So you know, hospitality companies, owner groups, technology companies, everyone's thinking, look, how do we target and bring back the, the demand that's out there? Um, so our discussion this week is going to be led by two uh, legendary hoteliers. We've got um, Carla Brooklyn, who has um, come up through places like Expedia and Travelport. Um, most recently, she's been at Selena as head of sales and now works at SiteMinder leading their enterprise sales. And we've got um, Sandro Fonsenka, who is at Louvre Hotel Groups down in Brazil uh, and responsible for sales and marketing uh, strategies, plans and, and activities down there. So guys, really excited to have you kind of speak to the group this week. So thanks very much for your time. Um, over to you, really. I look forward to, uh, look forward to your presentation. Great. Thank you, James. And hello, Carla. So I'm going to start to sharing a presentation here. As James told, my name is Sandro. I'm Head of Sales and Revenue at Louvre Hotels. And helping with this presentation, uh, we have Carla. Carla, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Hi, guys. And James has pretty much done the introduction. So um, let's jump into it. Okay. Um, before we start uh, this presentation, the idea here is to bring some insights of what we believe is going to help us improve performance now and the future. So bringing consistency. Uh, starting now, we bring three topics that might help us uh, identify the best opportunities and help us to create a to increase, to increase revenue. Um, the first topic is business mix. So what changed so far? Do we have new clients, new demands? Uh, same clients, but different share. Um, the second one is creative demand generation. So what should we pay attention to? And last but not least, collaboration, the famous teamwork. Uh, starting with our first talk, business mix, uh, I think here, uh, I bring here some Brazilian market information. Uh, I know that some countries are used to work with a different business mix, but I decided to bring some real data just to reinforce how important it is to know and understand your business mix, especially when we are trying to recover revenue increase. Um, although the Brazilian market's behavior is very similar to other countries. Uh, what can I say so far is that here in Brazil, we have the demand concentrated in leisure and in some areas with offshore companies that never stop, even during the peak of demand uh, of the pandemic. So therefore, our business mix changed. So our strategy changed as well. Um, based on the business mix, we were able to create a new strategy or even reinforce what we are already doing. So helping your hotel improve performance, sometimes you have to retarget uh, focusing on new clients because you have more availability, uh, new opportunities. For example, if leisure demand is returning first, as we can see here in Brazil, uh, it is a good time to think about uh, uh, improve and, and better uh, uh, have a better reservation from your own website. So just to share some ideas, um, for tour operator here in Brazil, we are offering a special deal like length of stay discount, uh, an aggressive discount when the, the, the guest books the, the hotel or and the flight together or even a, a car. So our public rates is not affected uh, and our value for money is also not impacted. Another segment that we see here that has increased is Vacation Club. Uh, and what generation more revenue for this business? It was actually a change in the consumer behavior. Uh, if, we live, uh, if you live in Rio, for example, you used to book a hotel in Northeast or even other regions. But right now, when you look for flights, it's really expensive. So what we did, uh, we offered our local hotels for this gap for this kind of guests. So if you're living in Rio, you can stay in Rio uh, or even in closer cities like Sao Paulo, so you can do by car. Uh, and when we talk about direct web, we create a series of exclusive promos in our site. 
such as early booking, uh, like 30% off and 30 days advanced, stay four and pay three, and even uh, advanced purchase. So now you can book a room and you can choose a, a date in the future and you have also a discount like 10% off some kind of advantage for the guests. So the main point here, uh, as far as segmentation and business mix go, I think we will have to be more analytical and smarter about it. Uh, corporate segment plays a major role in the hotel's profitability, even in tourist destinations, destinations such as Rio. Uh, so any segment with that much share needs to be sub-segmented. It will be crucial to identify what industry each one of them belongs. So oil and gas, banks, medical, education, whatever. Uh, what industry is producing a lot, a lot right now or not producing at all? We need to be able to identify and accommodate each of them. So this is basically what I bring here. Carla, do you want to add something? Yeah, I, I think the most interesting point here, and we actually discussed it yesterday, didn't we, Sandro, is that there are some hotels still, even in the current environment and over the last three or four months, that have still been successful at retaining occupancy and rate. And that's all come down to them safeguarding their occupancy through certain segments. Um, so I think the takeaway from, from the discussion we had was, it's not good enough any longer to just have a standardized business mix. A business mix like this, for example, is great to compare against your competitors or to look at how you can compare against the rest of the industry. But the reality is you have to go much granular and really start to hyper segment out this business mix to really understand how you can safeguard your strategy moving forward. Um, so the examples that we were kind of talking around yesterday were um, if you were working with construction, oil and gas and as an example, these are industries that will always travel. Um, and we know that the industry that we work in is so cyclical every six eight years we're going to go through another struggle so what are those segments that you can rely on that you can bank that can become your kind of hygiene factors for your business that you can then yield on top of um, i think the other thing that we were speaking around that was really interesting was um, to understand your segmentation better is just go outside of the industry spend a lot of time looking at all the intelligence that you can gather um, don't just go to the usual kind of SDR reports and the OTA insights um, now look at your tourist board your passenger numbers coming in um, and also look outside of the industry look at the economy look at the macro environment um, stop kind of just looking at yourself against your own metrics and your competitors and um, take a much wider lens at what's happening um, and I think the, the final piece I would probably just add um, is just that that customer mix becomes more important. So business mix, fantastic, but really it comes down to the customer and and which are the customers or the travelers who are um, traveling within these mixes comes down to customer need. Why are they traveling? Why will they be staying with you? And really to achieve a great customer mix, it all comes down to the diversification of, of your distribution strategy. How do you get the right people in front of the right shop window at the right time? Um, but it'd be great to, to look at um, the demand side of the business as well. Yes, Carla, uh, actually we, we talked about that yesterday. Uh, and yeah, we have a hotel here in Brazil that uh, are facing a better performance now than before the pandemic. I know it's, it's, not, it's not so usual, uh, but a few factors are important here. And one of them is because it, we, we are working with uh, oil and gas and the offshore companies. So that's why we still have demand. So we have other factors like uh, a local demand that was captured by the local account manager. Um, it's the only three-star hotel in the city. All the other competitors are four-star hotel. So when you think about an economic hotel, it's the only option. Uh, and it is a B2B hotel. So when we are focused on, on, on corporate clients, but in this case, we were more specific and talk about offshore clients. So what we did here, it was like digging deeper in our business mix and not analyze only the corporate, but what kind of corporate we are talking about. And in this case, it was oil and gas business. And another point uh, that was important for this kind of performance, it was again, uh, the, the consumer behavior has changed. Uh, the offshore has a protocol here in Brazil that every employee 
has to stay in a hotel for seven to 14 days before boarding. So uh, all that impacts, uh, all that impacts it, uh, positively uh, in our performance. So it, it's a mix of things that will help us to have our, this hotel having a better performance now than before. Going to the second talk, we are going to talk about uh, creative demand generation. Uh, here are some ideas that may help us increase and attract clients. I also bring some examples, um, starting with new ways to prospect. Uh, in times like this, everybody's focused on technology and to avoid contact and to optimize time. Uh, but we cannot forget uh, that we are talking with people in the other side. So we say that tech is going to, to rule the world, and, and maybe it's true, but what is going to be the differential when we talk about sales? Uh, we can humanize the approach, we can personalize even more with tech. Uh, we have so much data to help us with uh, that to this personalization. And what we did here last week, um, we did a YouTube live for all TMC, uh, and the interact in the, the intention the, of this life is to keep in touch with our clients, but the results was better than what than was expected. Uh, after that live, we received so many contacts, uh, wanting to know more about uh, hotel reopening, what we are doing to keep our guests safer and, and also future reservations. So it was a new approach. We never did this before. We started with the idea to to, okay, let's do a live and talk and keep in touch with our major clients with TMCs and, and the results was much better than what than we were expecting. Um, other point here is retarget new demand. So a new consumer behavior is happening right now in front of us. So we must pay attention to it and seek opportunities. Um, also new demand some clients that used to stay with our competitors, secondary ones sometimes, might now be considering us uh, as a potential hotel. Um, a new segment that we are working is delivery, uh, which increases food and beverage revenue for all the hotel at this point. So we are not able to have all the guests that we used to have in the past. So we start doing delivery uh, with our restaurants and it's increased uh, food and beverage uh, revenue. Another point is primary marketing. Uh, we, folk, we used to focus on global marketing and sometimes we just don't, don't work our primary marketing properly. And I know now it's time to, to look for them again. Short trips are trending right now. So we should look into that and come up, and come up with the strategies to turn this new demand into revenue. Today, we can identify our guest origin so we can tell if they are coming from different areas or from our primary market. And that's a key information to drive demand and consequently maximizing revenue and applying targets in the right market. Um, here in Brazil, we have another example. Uh, we have local industry uh, and they still have their offices closed, but the production in their factories didn't stop. So we are having demanding for meeting rooms, converted in, in offices. Uh, perhaps it is a new way to use our meeting rooms uh, since we don't have any event demand in the near future. Uh, when we talk about sales scene, of course, it is a, a way to, to generate demand more than ever uh, but because we are talking about prospects. But what we did here, uh, since our primary marketing is one of the major responsible to the comeback, uh, we bring back our sales team in our hotels uh, even part-time, but it was something that helped us to increase revenue, especially with this local demand returning first. So we were able to contact this industry and then convert our meeting rooms. We are able to contact the, the, the offshore company and to have the deal that is bringing more, more, more revenue and, and better performance for one of those, those uh, one of our hotels. And other point is safety. Uh, sales must have all the info about hotel safety and health measures. This is not a differential anymore, uh, but a mandatory thing. So better you communicate, that better is the result. Revenue has to have this information in the tip of the tongue. So 
when the guests and the clients ask about the safety, we have to know what we are doing uh, at hotel level to keep their guests safe. Uh, in this area, hotels in Brazil are working with partnership to reinforce uh, our commitment in safety for our guests. Um, there are some local chains here working with hospitals partnership, for example. Uh, the idea is pass a message that we are safer than before. So we have the endorsement of hospitals and sanitization companies. And the last one is created demand for, by technology. Uh, in fact, the technology will be important and the guests will probably choose hotels that offer uh, greater security uh, connected with the technology. But how can we use it in a more humanized way? Uh, we must remember that stay in a hotel is about experience. So interaction with people, new cultures, new places and gastronomy. And how can we enjoy all that with social distance? It is a challenge, uh, but technology can help us with that. And Carla, we were talking about that also yesterday. And please, can you continue about this, this subject? Yeah, so we were talking around how technology is more of an enablement tool now. So it enables um, hoteliers especially those that are still on limited resource to standardize and structure the, pro the most administrative processes. So I think the most basic examples we're seeing that we all know about already is around self-check-in, contactless room entry. Um, so technology, I think, is more of an enablement tool for hotels at the moment, because I think the, what we're seeing hotels be successful at, at the moment is provide more highly personalized experiences. Um, and I think we've talked around personalization for such a long time in the industry, but I think it's going to become more prevalent for us now more than ever. Um, and more in the sense that um, as travelers, especially on leisure, start to um, travel again, particularly when they're flying to new destinations, they may have a sense of anxiety around their travel experience. Um, I've actually recently seen luxury hotel brands do this particularly well, and I don't see why it can't be adopted across all spectrums of hotels, um, is just engage with your customer from, from the time of booking. So it's now adopting that process of pre-stay, during-stay, post-stay engagement. Um, and actually, it's a revenue tool for hoteliers. So we've seen um, leisure um, agents do it for a long time, call guests in advance, um, ask around their preferences, whether or not that's room preferences, stay preferences, to alleviate some of the anxiety for when they are staying in the property. And as a byproduct of that, they're now earning revenue from ancillary sales through private transfers, through dinner reservations, uh, room service reservations, um, bundling in um, baskets to rooms so that when guest checks when so that when guests check in, they've got the most basic necessities for their stay, whether or not that's you know hand gel wipes, face masks, um, and essentially it's just creating a brand experience that then becomes structured and standardised. So for those groups who are a part of a larger group or chain, it becomes a great brand experience that drives loyalty for those groups as well. Um, I think if you can drive it in a genuine way and it's service led rather than being a sales pitch, um, that's where we've seen groups really earn revenue from it. Um, and that could be as simple as picking up the phone, having that conversation um, and even booking a dinner reservation, ensuring that they have a certain table in a certain space um, within the hotel. I think very quickly, um, the other the two things I've seen work really well is taking a direct marketing approach to guests. You know, we've typically seen direct marketing be a B2B activity. Um, direct marketing to guests, those who previously stayed with you, um, we've seen work really, really well now. And then I think the last thing is more around um, safeguarding revenue. We've seen so many hints and tips go out around, um, you know, maintaining your rate as a priority, um, especially if occupancies are low. Um, I think if you do feel like you're having to bring down your rates um, in order to compete, um, do that in a really smart way. We've seen hotel groups, for example, in North America, um, really start to limit those offers around flash sales to customers who join loyalty programs only, or more um, around value adding. So, um, seen a hotel chain very recently offer a upgrade suite, upgrade to a suite from a standard room to enable that guest to work and also to exercise in their room. So they're not having to go and use public gyms, um, also to dine in their room. So by offering extra space, they're not diluting their, their rates, 
but they're offering a great experience to a guest in a time when the occupancy in the room is there there to be sold um, so those are kind of the kind of things that we've seen in the markets um, take place so far moving forward to our next um, slide here um, wrapping up with our last talk but sure not least uh, teamwork and we are going to talk about interaction but before I start talking about the interaction between market revenue and sales um, I would like to emphasize and how important the teamwork it is. So much so that what we are doing right now is basically that. So we have exchanged experience, knowledge, and insights, and all kind of things. So thank you all for that. And back into the presentation, uh, I believe we should start with this slide, <laughs> but because if we really, if we really want to improve performance and increase profit, the most important thing is a teamwork. And when it comes to the commercial area, uh, we mean the work done by revenue sales and marketing together uh, the collaboration between this area is crucial special especially when we are talking about revenue so i bring here uh, the marketing for e uh, which i believe is the clearest way to show you how integrate revenue sales and marketing are and they have always been when we think about what they do uh, we realize it's not so complicated to connect the dots so sum it up, sales work in, in, works in prospect, so selling the product, marketing works on promotion, so promoting pr the product, and revenue is going to work uh, on this demand. And we also help both on the strategy and negotiation, so price and place. For obvious reason, uh, sales are now struggling to prospect marketing might be facing a challenge on how to communicate with the clients and our guests and revenue are probably accepting all reservation requests at this point but what i want to express is that now is the time that we get things back on track so when we think go back to normal and they will at least we hope uh, whoever works in this department if they are in sync working as a team and they will have an advantage and we'll be for sure a step ahead of the competitors. And Carla, uh, I think you, you want to, to open a little bit more about the interaction, not only on commercial areas, right? Yeah, and, and I think firstly, when we talk around just the interaction between kind of, I suppose, the, the revenue responsible roles, which is revenue management, sales and marketing, I think, let's be really honest, um, it has always been hard. Like. Every time I speak to any one of those divisions, typically they don't know what the others are doing. So, you know, the marketing team don't know what the revenue strategy is. The revenue strategy don't know what the sales people are doing. And I think that lack of awareness and understanding of roles has always made collaboration hard. I think additionally, the fact that typically those teams are targeted and have different metrics and there's no alignment across those three teams has always made it difficult. Um, so I think, you know, I think the first thing to do is, you know, get back to basics, understand which, what each other are doing in terms of your, your team features and functions, then start to look at the value that are being driven by those teams into each other's uh, metrics and targets. If you can align metrics across those three teams, you're probably going to get a little bit more success. And I think the final piece is just very, be very clear on what your communication plan is. Um, but Sandra, as you were saying, I think we can't ignore the fact that a hotel is run by a lot of people and not necessarily revenue, um, sales and marketing. And I think when you talk around product in particular or price or place, all of these are held within so many different roles within the organization. I think if you look at reception staff, those front, um, those front facing staff there at the desk, they are the forefront of your product. They are the face of your product. Um, Yes, the price of the room is important, but if you want a guest to dine with you, to have drinks um, in your bar, that price of the ancillary products, um, the housekeeping staff, I think also the product becomes people. And that's where functions like HR, for example, come into play. Unless you're hiring the right people into the property, you're never going to deliver the right service. You have to train them, develop them to be the right people. Um, so I think, you know, it goes way beyond those, those three functions, um, ultimately. Um, and I think that's going to be really key as we return back to work is how do we continue to drive collaboration or get back used to collaborating in an environment that we haven't been in for the last three or four months. Okay, and 
before we finish the, the presentation, um, what we bring here, uh, this, the, these are the first facts. Uh, we'll be looking and bring forth it to guarantee a safe and profitable return of the hospitality in the industry and tourism, tourism overall. But as a sales and revenue professional, I think uh, we need to go beyond these measures, of course. So the world has changed with this pandemic. And obviously, any industry will, be, uh, will have to adapt to the, for those changes. And when it comes to tourists, the challenge will be radical. People will choose the destinations, hotels, in, in a different way. Uh, there are so much to consider right now that we didn't have before. But now we have to look for health and safety as well. Uh, and there, there is also the economic factor. So uh, another, another uh, variations are, are applied in, in, uh, in our daily uh, choices. So I think airlines and hospitality should interact and communicate more about pricing as flight tickets pricing have a direct impact in our hotels. So often uh, we have low occupancy in hotels when flight tickets skyrocket both industries uh, have, in, uh, have a strong and competent revenue management department. So it would be only natural if they spoke to each other, especially in times of crisis. It is a, it's a, it is a good start. Um, sales and marketing strategies and approach, I think we will have to move along and have different campaigns to appeal to all the different clients. Because if you want to, to be personalized, we have to have different campaigns for different clients. And all the strategies needs to be flexible and adaptable. Uh, revenue management will be uh, the, re the reality check of sales and marketing in this scenario, I believe. Uh, focus will have to be in regain old, old clients and also to gain new ones instead of revenue increase, at least at this, at this first beginning. Um, and also think leisure travelers will change so we have been isolated for some time and maybe we won't need long trips, so much planning. Maybe we, you, we are going to enter in a new area uh, where less is more and the hotel have to think about that too. So summing up everything, I think now is the time to just change things, behavior and, and approach, uh, work schedules, hours and routines will change. So, so will business. Uh, to change too. Uh, we need to focus back on service and value for money more than ever. Uh, we need to know exactly what, uh, who, are our, who are our clients. Uh, I think, I, I know maybe it's a little bit obvious what I'm saying here, but I think we got a bit sidetracked before the pandemic. So we need to find our way back in. And the hotel that accomplished all of that will have an advantage because it all comes down to service and experience. So I think this is a, it's a good way to end. Uh, Carla, do you want to add something? No, I think in the interest of time, um, I think we, we've got through a lot in the last 20 minutes, but um, uh, happy with everything we've managed to get through.